In this tutorial we're going to be looking at output using the Turing programming language and also a discussion of different data types that appear in the Turing language. The first thing I'm going to do is start with a classic starting point for almost any programming language which is your hello world program and in Turing it couldn't be much easier uh, the basic output command in Turing is from the word output they use the put command and I you can see I put the phrase hello world here and I put hello world in quotations I'm going to take away those quotation marks just so you can see the difference without the quotation marks the words hello and world appear in blue and that has a special meaning in Turing and that's not what we want to have happen here we want to have hello and world treated like a phrase that goes together like a sentence and so the way you do that is you put quotation marks around it if I run that program I end up with the phrase hello world and I could go on from here and just go along with that same theme I could say goodbye world and if I run my program now I get those two sentences um, or those two phrases and they're both strings so that's one data type called strings now how we output doesn't change depending on the data type so we're still going to keep using this put command but now I'm going to move over to numeric data types and Turing has two numeric data types the first one is an integer and just to refresh your memory of integers those are the the positive and negative counting numbers so they're whole numbers no decimal places and I put I'm doing put five uh, numbers like one two three or negative one negative two negative three and zero so all of those numbers are integers and then I'm also going to put a real number so that would be a number that has decimal places so 3.14 is a real number now real numbers can also be numbers that are integers but we're still expressing them as if they have decimal places so in this case 5 and 5.0 are the same thing but 5 has no decimal that's why it's an integer 5.0 specifies a decimal place so that makes it real and if I run this program you can actually see that the two fives actually end up getting output the same way even though one of them was this real data type the second one here was the real data type and the first one was an integer so I've done a bunch of output with a bunch of data types something else you might have noticed when I was putting this together is I actually added a blank line here on my program but that blank line did not appear in my output window and the reason for that is because um, most programming languages allow you to format your program so that it's visually easy to understand and that's usually referred to as white space so the same thing is true in Turing I could put all of those blank lines when I run my program it doesn't make an, uh, an impact on the output now if I do want to have a blank line if I actually want to put a blank line in place the way you do that is by outputting what's known as the empty string or the null string and the way that looks is just an open quote close quote so basically it's two quotation marks right next to each other and if I run that it inserts a blank line between my string output and my numeric output now you don't have to do that but there are going to be times when you want to insert a blank line there one last thing that I want to look at with regards to this tutorial is something else you can do with put which is joining together multiple lines of, of output there may be various reasons why you would do this and there are more way, reasons why you do this than I would be able to come up with examples so I'm just going to do something very simple here which is I'm going to append this second phrase which is goodbye world I'm going to append that to the first phrase and the way that I do that in Turing is I put two dots on the end of my line two periods and what that does is it will print out hello world and then rather than moving to the next line like hitting the return or the enter key it's going to wait there until the following output is produced and so it will put two lines in a row and we'll run this to show you the effect of that so here we see hello world and then goodbye world they're now on the same line because of that dot dot 
and I have appended. This is called appending, or actually it's called concatenation in most uh, computer language jargon. Now you can see that in doing this you do have to be careful of formatting and more involved formatting is something I'm going to cover in a, a later tutorial. But for now just simple things like making sure that if I'm going to say hello world, goodbye world, maybe I want to put a, a comma and a space on the end of this line so that when I run this the formatting looks nice and it actually is spaced out the way that I would probably want to see it if I was reading this text in a a book or a magazine or on a web page. Okay, so that's it for basic output using Turing.